Hello and welcome to Social Influence Lesson 1, Types and Explanations of Conformity. So, we're going to kick off with a poem by John Donne. No man is an island entire of itself. These first two lines of this phenomenal poem encapsulate what we as social psychologists are really interested in. And it's this idea that no man is an island. No man, no human, uh, behaves in a way that is independent of those around him. We're all part of this social continent, a piece of a social continent. And all our behaviour is constantly being affected and is affecting others. Um, so, we are going to look today at conformity. We're going to look at the main three types of conformity and we're going to look at explanations for why we conform. Before we do that, I just want to give you a bit of advice ab about how to use these videos. Uh, you must use them, but I don't mind being put on in the background while you're making a cup of tea or catching Pokemon or whatever you're doing, but really, if you're going to get the most out of this, you need to be sitting down, you need to have distractions away, maybe headphones in, and your guide notes out, because that's how you're going to retain this information. Anything less is just subpar. So you need to think. You need to make notes, 100%, and you need to ask questions. Now, some of your notes might be questions. You write those questions down, and you bring them in with you to class. Hell, if you've got a question right now, email it to me now. But make sure those questions start coming in early. Set up online discussions with other students and you can watch these videos and discuss the ideas as you go along. That will massively increase your retention and improve your overall performance in this subject. And get geeky. It is, you are a geek. You passed a geek, the 11 plus is a geek test. Even if you didn't pass it, you come pretty close. You have separated yourselves out as geeks and it's time to reclaim that word. When I was a kid, this is what geeks look like. This is what they look like today. So trust me, being geeky is where it's at. The world's ruled by geeks. So I think, use these videos, make the most of them, go above and beyond. There is no distinction between when you think about, oh, well, you know, I don't want to have to come home and think about school. School's just a building. What you're doing is learning, and that needs to happen all day, every day, for a variety of subjects. So use these videos. If you have any questions, let me know. Any advice and feedback as well is always welcome. So what is social influence? Put simply, it's the influence that other people have on our behavior as we interact with them in a social world. So it's any uh, influence that being part of a social group or in a social situation has on us. So the first task, can you think of ways in which other people influence your behavior? I want you to write down one or two examples of each, but I want you to pick these two categories here. One is explicit. So an example might be someone giving you an order and then there's implicit, where perhaps there's no direct instruction, but your behavior changes anyway. I'll give you one example, because this one can be a bit tricky. Um, a few years ago, a girl was telling me that when they were sitting in the common room, there was a group about five of them. One day, uh, they often brought in junk food to eat. One day, a girl brings in a salad. Uh, day two, there's two girls bringing a salad. By the end of the week, they're all eating salad. She's completely miserable about it, by the way, as well. Anyway, their behavior changes. Now, she assures me there was no direct rule that said, if you don't bring in a salad, you're out. You have to go find some new friends. It was just implicit influence. So I want you to come up with a couple of examples, write me in your guide notes in the margins, bring them with you next time. Okay, so what is conformity? Conformity is the tendency to change what we do, and that's behavior, or think and say in response to the influence of others. The pressure we feel when we're conforming can be both real or imagined. 
And that's really interesting because often it's imagined. So the different types of conformity. Kelman said that there were three, compliance, internalization, and identification. Compliance. Whenever you come across a new concept, it's always valuable to deconstruct the word, take it apart. What does this mean, compliance? Well, you probably know what it means to comply. If you don't, Google it now. Um, to comply means that you are going to do something. You're going to um, act in accordance with a wish or command. Um, you know what it is to comply, and implicit in this word is the idea that we may not agree with what we're complying with. So you often hear things like compliance with tax law. Maybe a company doesn't want to comply with tax law, but it doesn't like tax law, but it does it anyway. You uh, are in compliance with the uniform code. Now, I'm sure you love the uniform code, but let's just imagine for a second that you didn't. You'd still comply with it. So there's a lot of implication involved in the word. Compliance is superficial, public, and often transitory, and it deals with a change in behavior and, ex uh, and how we express our attitudes. What's interesting about it is we change our behavior publicly, but not privately. Do you, for example, follow the dress code when you're at home or outside school? That's interesting. Um, that suggests that you comply with the dress code, but you don't necessarily agree with it. Okay, And that's the essence of compliance. The next one, then, is private acceptance, what we call internalization. So in internalization, this is the deepest level of conformity, where there are changes to our behavior and our beliefs. This is deep and permanent. And essentially, we're adopting a new viewpoint when we do this. An example here is uh, that they always give in the textbooks is about living with a veggie at uni. Well, this actually happened to a friend of mine. He met a girl. Um, he was a proud meat eater. He loved the meat. And then he met this girl, and she's a big vegetarian. He obviously loves her. So he's changed his views. Now, it's not compliance, because when we go out, occasionally uh, just the lads uh, men um, when we go out he still orders halloumi so the, the change is permanent and it's internalized and it's um, a real change now he's not just doing it to be liked identification Identification is a very interesting form of conformity and it really relies on membership or desired membership of particular groups. So um, when you join a group, you may want to be part of that group uh, so much that you begin to identify and you change your behavior as a result. So uh, the obvious example is when you join some like football club, um, you may adopt some of their behaviors, some of their, certainly their dress code, but some of their behaviors, their mannerisms. Uh, you may be quite a timid and quiet chap at home or a chapette, and yet when you get in the stadium, you're screaming and shouting and so forth. So this is very much about identifying with the group. Now, the behavior and the, the beliefs are public and private. However, they may be temporary. And when you leave that group, um, it may change. The only example from my own life that I've got is a friend of mine from university who went to work for Apple. Um, and when he joined Apple, he used to be fun. I mean, he's, he's fun now, but he used to be fun. And then he joined Apple. And it was like a religious conversion. He, uh, he, all he talked about was Apple. He loved Apple. Um, if you struck up a conversation, it, we'd always uh, sneakily play... Um, the game how long is it until we mentioned apple again and it was seconds like this guy had become it was more like joining a cult than a business anyway 
he really in, internalized in many ways the beliefs and the uh, ideas and the ideology of that company, really identifying with it. And when he left, a lot of those behaviors just changed. And that's fine. But that implies it was severe identification in that case. Right, so why do we conform? We may conform, we may comply, we may identify, we may internalize, but why? What's the purpose of it? Why can't we all just be our own people? Well, let's look at it. According to Deutsch and Gerard, 1955, they proposed a dual process dependency theory. Dual means two, and look, they've got two processes. They say there are two processes at work in social influence. These are normative and informational. Normative social influence. Well, before we get stuck into it, it's always helpful to deconstruct the word. Now, you may not know what the word normative means, but you should know that the word norm is linked to the word normal. So what it means is we're talking about groups when a, gr a group has a norm and that norm describes the typical or, or normal beliefs and behavior of that group. Okay so um, you can think about people who behave abnormally. Yeah uh, people who go gr against the social norms. So normative means is to do with norms and normality and group norms. So normative social influence is when we conform in or to the norms of a group in order to be liked or because we fear rejection and isolation. So we might laugh at that bad joke because we want the person to think we find them funny and then accept us. Or you might imitate um, someone's fashion sense uh, fashion choices in order to to be accepted by them one possible explanation of where this comes from is from evolution imagine two individuals uh, one individual who strongly felt the need to belong and be liked by a group. Well, if you want to be liked by a group, you're going to try harder to be liked by that group. And if they like you, and it's a life or death situation, I'm thinking like caveman times, where there's limited food and there's lots of predators and stuff like that. If they like you because you're trying to be liked, then that may actually help your survival. If you just keep rubbing everyone up the wrong way, or, you know, imagine Sheldon from Big Bang in the in the caveman era. How how long is his direct honesty gonna gonna help him survive? If if his if his fellow man doesn't kill him, they're gonna at least leave him out in the in the cold for the saber toothed tigers or whatever. So you can see a real survival adaptation here. You don't need to know this, it's just interesting. One possible explanation. informational social influence so just as we did before normative we broke it down here we're talking about information so we are influenced in social situations by information and that information is coming from other people so this is um this happens for example when the situation is ambiguous ambiguous means you're not sure what's going on there's some confusion um if everyone just suddenly got up in class and ran out the room, including me, how long would you sit in the classroom for before you imitated their behavior? Okay, you would assume probably that they had knowledge you didn't and just follow them. So this is um, informational social influence. We look to others for cues on how to behave, often in ambiguous situations. When we uh, conform in this situation, we actually internalize the behavior of the majority. And we do that out of a desire to be right. 
Um, this happened during the EU election. There were a lot of people asking me who, uh, which side I was going to vote for. And uh, quite a few of them said things like, I'll probably just vote X because that's the position that, let's say, Labour support and my family votes Labour. So they're just sort of defaulting back to their social group, their majority opinion. They don't know how to vote. They're just going to go with what everyone else is doing. Uh, in that case, the individual they had in mind was going with the, the, the wrong side or the losing side, sorry. Let's go back to evolution then. Can we explain this? Well, there are parallels. If you've ever seen a stampede, so you have like a, a threat, whatever it may be, it may be a predator, enters uh, the herd or tries to enter the herd. A couple of animals spot him. They bolt, they run. And the other animals, they haven't seen the predator. They haven't seen the danger, but they just start running anyway. Lots of animals die in stampedes, but uh, on balance... Having that herd instinct probably increases your survival rate. If you say, well, I'm not going to run, I'm just going to chill, there's probably nothing, and there is a predator there, um, you're not going to be laughing. Well, you can't laugh because you're a whatever animal, buffalo, whatever that is. Okay, uh, this is how it all fits together then. So normative social influence and informational. Informational explains internalization. Remember, these two are explanations and these are types. Really try to keep that clear because the question will just say, give types, give explanations. And if you give the wrong one, you won't get any marks. So these are explanations. Internalization is explained by ISI. Compliance is explained by normative but identification is explained by both so we start off in identification we buy the clothes we hang out we laugh at their jokes that we don't really find funny but over time we identify so strongly with that group that we internalize it um, it's well worth watching a film called american history x um, if you can watch that film i think it might be an 18 actually but it charts the journey of um, Edward Norton's character, who becomes a uh, racist skinhead in America, and he does these terrible things. He goes to prison, and in prison, he gradually becomes reformed. And when he comes, I'm going to have to go watch the film now. And when he comes out of prison, he um, he's like this this new man. So he no longer identifies with the behaviours, and he's um, out of the group. So the behaviours change as well. American History X is a phenomenal film. Ask your parents if you can watch it. Um, it is an 18 though, so I'm not sure if that's legal. Right. So that's it. That is the uh, discuss, describe, explain part of uh, types and explanations of conformity. What we're going to look at now is evaluation. So in the um, course, you're required to be able to explain psychological ideas like normative influence, um, compliance, stuff like that. But you've also got to be able to evaluate them. And to evaluate something, we're weighing up the strengths and weaknesses. In the context of psychology, we're often talking about evidence. What's the evidence for any of these? So. The first piece of evidence that supports these ideas is by Schultz. Schultz gathered data from 132 hotel rooms um, and uh, in all the rooms was a message saying that there are benefits to the environment from using your towels. So just a bit of information. However, in half of the rooms, there was a second message that told the participants, in this case the uh, the residents of these hotel rooms, um, guests I should say, that 75% of other guests choose to reuse their towels each day. So it's establishing a group norm, isn't it? It's saying people use this hotel, the norm for them is for 75% use their towels, reuse their towels. They found that people had the second message, this normative message, 
um, were 25% less likely to request fresh towels. So this message here influenced their behavior. But they're not doing it from an informational point of view. They're not doing it because they don't know how to behave. Um, if they care about the environment, that message has already been put out there. But they're doing it so as to fit in with this group. And the pressure here is imaginary, isn't it? None of the other guests even know how many towels they're using. So it's completely implicit as a form of influence. Um, just a little note. The type of experiment here is a, a field experiment because what they're doing is they're gathering, gathering data from the field. Now, the field doesn't mean a field. It means out in the real world, basically. And hotels are in the real world. And therefore, the researchers had to go out of their labs and they had to do some actual, actual work for a change. So that's what we call a field experiment because they use real settings, in this case, hotel rooms. Um, they had two variables that they were interested in, in as well. Psychology is all about manipulating variables and measuring stuff. In this case, most experiments have an independent variable. It's the thing you change in the study to see if it has an effect on something else. That something else is the dependent variable. So in this case, they either had, they had two conditions, one with the normative message, 75% of people reuse their towels, and the other uh, group, group two, let's call them, had no second message, no normative message. And they measured if there was a difference between the two groups, and there was in terms of the number of customers requesting fresh towels. So, independent variable, they're manipulating, measuring the effect on the dependent variable. We're going to come back to this a lot, but it's worth getting familiar with it early on. Lincoln, Back and Perkins found that US uh, teenagers who were exposed to normative messages that the majority of their peers did not smoke were subsequently less likely to take up smoking. So if you tell teenagers that the majority of their peers aren't smoking, aren't drinking, in theory, they should smoke and drink less. This has practical applications. We could apply this, uh, the government could apply this to reduce uh, speeding. You know, the majority of people don't speed and stuff like that. Fine et al. So Fine et al, the other two were both normative uh, social influence studies. Fine et al investigated the role of um, informational social influence. Essentially, participants were shown televised presidential debates of uh, one of which was Ronald Reagan. During the debates, participants were shown what they thought was the reaction of other participants in the study. So participants just like them. Um, what they found was that when the participant, their fellow participants were reacting positively towards the candidate, that increased the chance that they would rate that candidate positively as well. So they were getting cues uh, based on what everyone else was, um, how they were reacting to it, and that was influencing their own rating and their own decision. This has huge implications. Here's the, uh, the graph from the original study. As you can see, when the audience were pro-Reagan, the individual, the participant, rated Reagan much higher than when the audience were ag um, against Reagan here. So pro-Reagan audience, you see a lot of smiling and whooping when he talks. And, everyone, and the participants think, so yeah, he's the man for me. When people are booing and jeering, not the man for, for you. Fine is such a great study. Uh, you need to step up this year, as you know. You've got your super curricular journal. This is exactly the sort of thing that could go in there. Here is the full study. I wouldn't read the whole thing. It's a, it's a post-grad research paper. But I would have a look at experiment three and see if you can unpack a little bit of that. Remember, if you do read it for your super curricular journal, you need to summarize what you read in that journal as well. 
there's the uh, QR code if you um, want to just iPad or mobile phone it. Right, so this is what we have covered in today's session. We've looked at the types of conformity that exist, compliance, identification, internalization. We've looked at explanations of conformity, informational and normative social influence, and some key studies like Schultz, Fine and Lincoln, Back and Perkins. Next lesson, we're going to go on to talk about Ash and his uh, variations. We did cover a few RM concepts and there are some coming up. So we looked at independent variable and dependent variable and what a field experiment is. That is all for this session. Um, next lesson, I'm going to introduce you in class to the exam criteria. We're going to practice some exam questions, consolidate our knowledge on this, and then you'll have another one of these next time. Thank you very much. Hopefully you got something out of it. Goodbye.